Hey, welcome to Liverpool Connection Podcast. I'm Julian here with Glenn Cooley. Uh, the Premier League is back. Finally, after the yeah, the nightmare, the boredom of the international break, uh, which you always hate this early into the season because you've been waiting for the Premier League and the Premier League season to start for so long. And then it comes to an abrupt halt. And then you wait. But anyway, we have Wolves. We're recording this pretty late on Friday and playing Wolves early tomorrow. And we've looked pretty good this season. We put in a really good performance against uh, a highly fancied Aston Villa side. And now it's the big one. It feels like a massive game, Glenn. It feels like that we want to take that that really impressive performance against a decent Villa side and carry this on to a game against Wolves who are struggling. They haven't been great, but then it's this early kickoff. We know the issues. We know the uh, the players have come back late from wherever they've been around the world. Our record is a pr- pretty dreadful in this. So there's a lot of reason for this to motivate the players who are available, who are fit as well, because you can bet Klopp and the coaching team have made players, new players, aware of how he has struggled in this in the past. And you would hope this is a motivating factor, but it feels like a really big game, even this early into the season. Glenn? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, it, it just feels like like every time we had a 12-30 last year, um, we were just awful, weren't we? Just, every time we had oh, we just get absolutely battered by some of the worst teams in the league. Um, so with it being a national break coming back, it's just so 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 important that we um start really well, um and when I say start really well, even if it's nil nil after thirty minutes, that 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 will that will be fine, um yeah. and sort of we we've, we've got to make sure we've got to make sure that we uh that we win tomorrow, um it'll be a, it'll be a massive it'll be a massive um massive win come back from the nationals. It always is an absolute pain in the ass. I feel like we always get given these top thirties as well after the internationals, which is Absolutely bollocks, isn't it? We've got a couple of one in a, in a few weeks as well. It's not in the Nationals, but another another 12-30. Uh, Everton, isn't it? Is yeah, it Everton? Yeah, Everton, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, big, big game, mate. It feels like... I, I mean, this can't be random. I believe this will be... I think there's 12 um, of these early kickoffs that we've had, and I think the closest to us is Tottenham with six. <laughs> so it's kind of... Like, how is this? How is this being accepted as something that is fair? Number one, and number two, surely this this early kickoff determined, of course, by TV. You know, it should be shared amongst uh, particular teams. A big game like Liverpool Wolves. I mean, it's it's a, it's a game. It's not a big big game though, is it? I'm sure there's other games that could have been moved to this for the TV. But it's just surprising how many we have had. But saying that, we shouldn't be using this as an excuse. You know, we know we, we've known we're playing this for a while. We've known about the international break, and we've got to use that as a motivating factor, right? To to go forward, win this game, so we can like squash this ridiculous, terrible record that we've had, so we can move on past it. Yeah, big time. Um, like you say, it's it's one of them. Like you just got to get over it. Um, I think. I, I've actually listened to, um, I mean, this is how bored we've been without um, no football <laughs> being on. I was actually listening to a Wolves podcast um, a couple of days ago and they were really, really negative about Wolves and just saying, like, that they are pretty hopeless. Um, they're not massively confident in Gary O'Neill. I know they've done well in, in the first game against United, but they're not they're not confident at all. Um, so, you know, we, I say we start well. You would think that if we can score, if we can score, the game's over. Um, with the amount of players that we've got, I know we're going to talk about it in a minute, but the amount of players that we'll probably have to bring mm-hmm. on the bench as well, um, they don't really score that many goals, typically Wolves. Um, so yeah, if we can if we can score and go one nil up, and I think it, I think it'll be um, quite a comfortable day for us actually. It's. You know, I look at the early kickoff. We know that, but it's the we're going to go to the the team, and Trent is of course out of this, and that is a huge. That's a 
huge factor because of course we know since the world cup since we've come back from that we've been using trent in this hybrid position um we haven't looked convincing at times but the results say otherwise we're getting results and there's no i think we've still the best uh, record since we in the league since we changed to that and it's worked now we go into this game and Trent of course isn't available uh, apparently you know it's a hamstring injury so the big question for this is do we do we stick to this hybrid team which we have played non-stop including pre-season friendlies we've played in every single game since we first introduced it once we come back from the world cup or do we do we go back and do we go into a solid four, you know, probably a four, three, three or uh, something similar to that? The, the the problem I have is if we keep the hybrid, I don't know who's going to be able to play that role because you would think that Gomez is most likely going to take over at right back tomorrow. Um, I would doubt that you're going to drop Robertson. He's going to play because we saw um, the Greek. He played the hybrid in preseason. Robertson can't really do it. Center backs, it looks like it's going to be Matip and Canate apparently is fit. So do you keep the same structure and Gomez and Robertson come inside and do that? Or do we just we say, hey, you know, we should be we should know how to play a four three three and not have to use the hybrid within it. What's your thoughts on that? I, I, I don't think so if I know it it feels like about a month ago, but the actual villa game itself, Trent didn't go in there that as much as what he has done. He sort of mm-hmm. sort of stayed a little, he stayed a lot more. And a lot of the balls that he was putting through, he was sort of from the normal right back position. Mm-hmm. A lot of the time he'd picking the ball up and he was just pinging the ball um into that space for Salah and Nunes. Um so I I mean no one will go in there. I think it'll just be a little bit more it'll be a bit be a bit more solid, a bit more four three three. Um and that's fine. There's no, there's no problem with that. You don't need to do it. Even if Trent was fit, you don't need you don't need to do that every time. Like the Villa game, if you've got a threat like an Ali Watkins, um, where Villa have got, you know, him running down there, you don't need to you don't need to necessarily go in there. You can be a bit a bit more um pragmatic. So I think there'll there'll be a four there'll be a four three three. Yeah. Um, I think Gomez Gomez will just play a, a normal right back position. Yeah. And and it's not like <laughs> You know, with someone like Soboslai who started the season really well, McAllister in the midfield, we have a lot more creativity than we had last season. So it's not necessary that we need, when Trent is out, that we need to say, hey, you know, we want to stick to this because we want more creativity in midfield. So we're going to push someone into the midfield. We don't necessarily need that. You know, it's away from home. Um, it's against a team that haven't been playing well, you would think with our attacking options, which is one of the best, if not the best options in the league, that we're going to get goals, but it's a matter of keeping us tight at the back. And that's the one thing that there are question marks about. Of course, Virgil is going to be out tomorrow. Canate, if he starts, you know, he's only just come back from injury as well. Uh, But the midfield is interesting because, of course, McAllister has been away. Um, only came back what today, I believe it was Friday, alongside with Nunes as well. Um, and I believe they both traveled with the squad, so they're in the squad for tomorrow. But what would you, um, uh, what do you think about the midfield? It's really tough, mate, isn't it? Um, because it sounds like playing football in Bolivia, <laughs> it doesn't seem much fun. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's where McCallus has obviously been. Um, yeah. And yeah, like apparently the altitude is so bad up there. Um, oh damn man, I don't, I don't know. Geography's pretty good, but um, it's <laughs> it's not it's it's tough. It's tough to see how he can play. It, it will be tough to see how he can play. Um, <clears throat> I actually wouldn't mind. Do you know what, what Kurt, what's going on with Curtis at the minute? Is Curtis is Curtis played against Villa. I don't think he went. I don't think I'm not sure if he's. I can't remember if they said he was fit for tomorrow. I have to check. But, I would, um, I would if he's like, fit, he should start. I, would, I think I so. Mean, yeah, I think. Right? Yeah, he's a bit more phys- He's 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 got that bit of physicality about him that I think would be good against Wolves. I think him, him, Sobislai, and a uh, and maybe, um, Endo, um, 
I know obviously they've never played together, the three of them, but they're all new, aren't they? <laughs> so whatever you put in there is is all going to be quite is all going to be quite new. But yeah, I, I obviously it's hard to say because you don't know what what everyone's fitness levels are and all that bollocks. But I'm thinking I'd play Curse. Curse would be Curse would be high up on the list if he hasn't got if he's if he's good. I think he's had pro- if he's had the two weeks training. I don't know. If he, if, could you know if he's playing for the twenty ones? I don't think so. No. He so was... yeah, Curtis, Shabazzai, and um, and Endo, I think would be my my three. I don't think I'd put Gravenberg in yet. Um, not not away at Wolves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd agree. I would agree with you. I think it's easy to pick. It's like it's it's like anything. It's like okay, who's definitely in? Well, Shabazzai is going to start, right? So that's one for the midfield, and then the other two. It's up in the air. <clears throat> I agree with you regarding Gravenberg. I don't think he'll be starting. Uh, McAllister, it's all, you know, it's a tough journey to come back from. Who knows? Um, Endo, I, I feel like this is a good game. I feel like this is an ideal opportunity for him. And um, I didn't see the game. I saw the highlights and apparently he was outstanding against Germany. Um, yeah. When they beat him, I think 4-1. I would think, I would hope it would be something like Endo, uh, uh, Sober Sly. And yeah, if he's fit, Jones, um you know, Bajetic is back, but I would thought maybe he's more likely he comes off the bench. Um, but I would, if he's fit, Jones, it would make sense to pick yeah, those so. three in in midfield. Um, so it's tough in it because a lot of it is like where they've been and where they've played and how many minutes they played and all that. And yeah. I think Endo's obviously played for Japan, but I think his games that he's played has been in um, in Europe. Both of his games have been in Europe. So he's mm-hmm. not got, he's not got any you know crazy travel and stuff. So you, you'd think that he might be he might be good to go. Um, front three is a difficult. One. Well, I suppose it's not a difficult one now because uh, Louis Diaz has come from. I don't know if he was he might have actually just been in Colombia. I mean, I just say I say Colombia as if he's just been in Coventry, but like. <laughs> He, he, yeah, Coventry is definitely worse. He's been, he's, <laughs> been, uh, he's been yeah. to Colombia, and then obviously Nunes has Nunes has been away um, with Uruguay. So you would think that it would be the front three would be Jota, Gakpo, and and Salah. Um, of those, of those two, possibly. Yeah. Come on. Completely. I mean, yeah, agree. I mean, and uh, Jota scored a couple of goals. Gakpo did as well. Both of them played really well for their um, international teams in the week, um, which is always good. We know that for a forward. Once you get in the goals, you want to keep playing, and the goals tend to, you know, they tend to come in spurts for players like that. And of course, Jota going back to his former club Wolves as well. Obviously, Salah's, you know, barring an injury, falling off the the bus on the way to the game, he's going to be starting. But yeah, I think Gakpo, who um, it's weird. People have said that he hasn't started the season well. Well, he hasn't played in his right position. He was playing at the kind of the, the top of the midfield, which doesn't really work for him. But I think away at Wolves, um, with the changes that we're going to have in midfield as well, I think it is vital that you have someone like Gakpo who can play that kind of uh, old school Firmino role and drop in and drop into the midfield at times as well, I think is going to help and be beneficial. Um, Jota, not ideal on the left, but I, he can definitely do a job there, and I think that's going to be dependent on um, Diaz as well. But yeah, I would think. I mean, our bench is going to be pretty strong tomorrow. When you yeah, think about it, I mean, we're going to have a ton of options on there if if, if they needed. So, I I think with Gakpo as well, we've not having Trent, um, we've not having Trent playing and McAllister, um, obviously not Thiago as well, having having. That extra play that might be able to hold the ball up a little bit more for us and yeah. be people in the play. Um, I think I think it'll be a good option for us tomorrow. By the way, um, I forgot about this when he got announced. And it's funny that <laughs> we didn't bring it up earlier, probably because we don't really care about internationals. But how funny is it going to be? Well, probably won't be. Nunes having um, having Bielsa. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, uh, I know. <laughs> he's been injured so many times, isn't he? Can you imagine? Well, I can't. well, the whole thing was weird, right? So Nunes goes away with Uruguay, and then uh, he plays. Nunes plays the first game. You know, sets up a couple of goals, didn't score, but apparently play well. And then he, Nunes starts the second game and gets dragged off at half time, and then. 
Bielsa, the lunatic, it, it says you know he, he came to he came to Uruguay and wasn't and wasn't fit, wasn't ready, had some muscular problems and things like that. Which, well, the fact, why did he start the game? You know, <laughs> number one, if he wasn't a hundred percent fit, as well. Um, so I'd like to know what that's all about. Uh, why and it was a qualifier for Uruguay as well. So, like uh, you know, there must be some genuine issue with Nunes because you would have thought, kept it, unless it's a tactical thing, right, that he wasn't happy with, and he was just covering himself by saying, "Hey, you know, he wasn't hundred percent fit, so I'm going to take him off because of that." I'm I'm happy he wasn't. No, I mean, can you imagine him playing ninety minutes? Oh, I know. I'm happy as well. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> and um, but um. We haven't actually spoke about Salah because last time we did a pod, me, you and Chris were absolutely shitbags and we were all like pretty much down in the dumps and just thinking. And by the way, when we recorded it, it was the day of the bid. Um, yeah. So like, I think a few days later, everything had calmed down a bit and we were we were probably all like, I think I didn't sleep, mate. Honestly, I'm not messing. I, I, I woke myself. I was weak, waking up about four o'clock in the morning and just checking my phone. Updates every day. I was, I was, I was absolutely delighted, <laughs> delighted when that window shut. I think it's, it's such a, such a. It would have been a mental decision, but to have him, to have him for the for the season, um, it's just amazing, isn't it? You can't. And we've said this all along. There's nobody that can replace him. Number one, firstly, don't care about the money. That's not under our control. And but there's no one that, at this point of time, who. You can pretty much, again, who plays in his position in the planet, you you can guarantee is going to get a ton of assists. He's going to get a ton of goals, right? He's going to contribute throughout the season. He's someone you can trust, and he's the difference between us. I, you know, I look at our team, and it's it's there's goals all over the place. We're going to win a lot of games. We're going to score a lot of goals. We're going to concede plenty from what I can see, but we have a mentality within us that we're going to fight. We're going to win games. So I think there is an opportunity for us to challenge. I'm not saying we're going to challenge Man City for first. That's way too early, but I definitely think finishing second, looking at the other teams at the moment, that a lot of them are kind of a state of disarray and, uh, who knows how they're going to look. I feel like, in a way, out of that next challenging set of teams, which would be what? Arsenal, Chelsea, Man United, uh, Spurs, probably not. Uh, Villa, probably not. I think we have the best opportunity to finish second, even with our lack of backups in defence. I think our midfield and attacking options are so fucking good that we're going to be a hard side to beat just because we're gonna we're gonna score a ton of goals and and keeping Salah it's, it's key for that you lose Salah at this point with no replacement then you pretty much give up potentially definitely like top two top three but maybe Champions League as well so yeah, yeah over the moon like everyone is I can't believe there's anyone that out there know, that yeah. would say oh I'm really gutted we should have taken the money oh, yeah. but no you keep it of course he's a brilliant player I don't think anyone is like that but I think I mean, we're not going to enter now. We're going to do another one, but I think, I think it's, I think you could stay at Liverpool till 34, 35 and, and still be banging in twenty goals a season. But let's get into that one uh, down the pub because that one could be a, a long conversation. Yeah, we, we uh, won't even talk about it now. He's at the club. That's, we'll yeah, leave all the transfer stuff. We'll enjoy yeah, him, and we won't worry about you know the so madness. But yeah, what, what's the score going to be? Ooh, I've got a good record this season. I'm telling you, um, I'm going to fuck it up this weekend. Um, well, everything points towards us losing, right? That's what everyone's expecting. No, don't shake your head. I'm just going off what our record is, what the journalists <laughs> want, what the media wants, the fans yeah. want, right? Everyone thinks, oh, you're going to lose this game. I don't Nobody think we will. To to I don't think we'll. I don't think we will. I think we will win this game. I think Wolves are... Uh, uh, Wolves are... That bad at the moment. They they haven't they've lost a couple of or two or three you know really good players for them, but and their defense ain't all that. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to stop us scoring. They might score against us, um, just because Trent's out, Virgil's out. It's you know it takes a little while, and then our midfield's changed. So I think I don't know why, but it's going to be I'm going to go for Wolves one, Liverpool four. 
I, I, yeah. I think tomorrow as well, yeah. Well, yeah. that's where I was just shit flagging for. I was really worried about it. Um, I, I think we'll win. I think it's three or four nil. Um, but I'll go. Do you know what? I'll go Liverpool three nil. Um, I think the, the king, the king will bag. Don't, I mean, don't forget we're playing against 12, 13 men. You see the ref and who's on VAR. So yeah. we're going to have to deal with that as well. Hopefully we can, you know, avoid any instance oh. of ricking. Last game, last game we had 11 players, didn't we? So that helped. Yeah, let's hope we can keep 11 on the pitch again because it helps. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. All right. We will we'll wrap this up. So make sure you do the like stuff. Make sure you do the subscribe stuff. And uh, next time we do a party, we'll do a uh, we'll do a post match on the Wolves game, and hopefully our predictions come true. So, all right. Have a good one. Cheers, Glenn. See you later, mate.